Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to today's video. Today I'm going to be reacting to Mr. Nightmare 4 Creepy True Kidnapping Horror Stories. Now, I feel like this is going to be the scariest video that he has ever put out. Because there's a difference between like breaking and entering stories and all this shit. This is true kidnapping horror stories. Do you understand how fucking scary that is? This video is going to give me more social anxiety than I already have. Usually whenever you hear a kidnapping horror story on his channel, it's very rare. And it's usually on one of those big compilations he lets out that's like... 10 scary stories and it's usually like 30 something minutes long the only reaction i did to one of those i put on my second channel like a year and a half ago probably like two years ago now links in the description down below if you want to go check it out subscribe to my second channel while you're over there uploading usually daily gaming videos on my second channel but yeah subscribe to that channel while you're over there i seen this and i was like i really want to react to it but i don't know how i'm going to react to it because like i can't tell if i'm going to be Looking at people like, oh, that's stupid. Why would you even do that? Or if it's going to be something like, that's going to scare me. <laughs> but there's sometimes horror stories where it's like, you're a little kid. Like, it's not just like someone comes up, grabs you, ties you up, throws you in the back of a trunk. It might be something where you're a little kid and it was some pedophile saying, hey, come get some candy or some shit. I, I don't know what I'm expecting here. But anyways, I just wanted to react to it and, and make another video for you guys. And let's jump on into it. It always says he, he copyrights these noises, but I never get copyrighted on his videos. Hey look, the, everyone had a name. None of them were anonymous. That's rare. Being a little kid is a scary point in your life. Yet you're too young and innocent to even realize mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, that's what I mean, kidnapping horror stories. I'm not, holy fucking shit. <laughs> kidnapping horror stories, not all of them I, I doubt are gonna be like brutally kidnapped and then like grabbed off the side of the road. I feel like a lot of them are gonna be kids making dumb mistakes, you know? So it's not gonna be as bad as people would expect. I mean, still bad because you're getting kidnapped, but you know. I have a horrible memory from my early childhood that I wish I could simply block out completely. Don't we all? I just can't. I mean, probably not I to this level. I was six or seven years old. I was at the summer rec program that my parents had signed me up for. God damn it. I was in the six and seven year olds group, mm. the youngest group at the camp. Mm. One day our group was at the playground and some oldish man sitting on the bench of started course. talking of to course. me. Of course. He knew my name. I remember feeling very comfortable with him, like he seemed kind. He gave me a candy that I ate on the spot, and he offered to push me on the swing. Uh, uh, uh. I think I told him that's all right. Uh, uh. Continue talking to him, uh, uh. asking him dumb little kid questions. He introduced himself do you as do this to other kids? still remember to the what? day, and told me he was friends with my mom. And since she was running late, he'd have to pick me up after camp. Oh. That's the bait right there. You need to tell your kids this type of shit when they're five. If they say they know me or anything like that, if I have not, like, made it clear that this person was picking you up or you don't know who the fuck they are, safe words and everything, like, you gotta be careful. Old people, fucking six and seven-year-old, what's his name again? Fucking Ronald or some shit like that? Ronald McDonald, clown head ass? I said okay. And okay. around that time, okay. the counselors shouted for our group to assemble our line by the gate. Yeah, where are the, the counselors in this shit? We got back to our group's home area, where we would sit and wait for the parents to come pick the kids up. I saw Robbie approaching Robbie. the bench, and he said to Cal, one of my counselors, that he was picking me up for the day since my mom wasn't available. Oh, he's fooling the counselors. Cal looked at me and made sure I knew him. I nodded my head. Bro, you don't know him, though. That's the thing, it's a little kid. Be like, do you know this guy? Like, have you seen him at your house before? Does he just, like... One of your dad's friends come over, a couple brewskis with the boys or some shit, or did you just meet him a while ago and he said, I kind of know your mom somewhat, by the way, I'm going to fuck you in the ass later. You know what I mean? Cal crossed my name off in his notebook and high-fived me goodbye, and I walked off with this <laughs> Good luck. Guy. I remember he grabbed and held my hand as we walked. And I also remember that he was walking extremely fast, like it was hard for me to keep up oh, with my yeah. short little... We made it to his car. He let me in the back passenger seat. He seemed to be in a hurry. He rushed into his seat, started the car, locked the doors, and started driving fast out of the parking lot. Yeah, this dude is a child molester or yes, like you sex traffic trade yeah, some shit. Dude, I remember Bible. hearing some yelling noises from outside the car. I lifted myself off the seat to look out the rear window and saw two of my counselors pointing at the car I was in to one of the park supervisors. This is when things got scary for my little self. As I was looking out the back window, mm. the man screamed at the top of his lungs to get the fuck down. 
I got so scared, I started to cry and tried opening Holy the door when he was at a red light, but he had the child lock on. He tried to calm me down by apologizing, saying he was driving me home. I can't remember what exactly I was thinking, but I do remember being scared, starting oh to wonder if God. I was actually being brought home. We were now you're starting to wonder? This dude's like, get the fuck down, don't let the fucking counselor see you. But locks the fucking car and... and and he's like, I'm sorry, buddy. It's okay. And he's like, oh, that's fine. I still believe you. Like, in the car for quite some time. And I started to realize I didn't recognize where we were. We were not anywhere to the, near my to house. To the sex slave trade I area. Like I had to throw up from being so scared. I remember Robbie muttering, oh shit, oh shit, constantly under his breath. And he kept looking in his rearview mirror. Then, the sound of a police siren directly behind us made him scream in anger once more. The counselor's just gone. He pulled to the side on a neighborhood road and told me to go along with whatever he said. But he didn't have a chance for that. Two police officers stormed out from the car with their guns half drawn and yelled at Robbie to step out of the vehicle with his hands up. He oh, did so shit. without question and was cuffed while they had him laying face first on the concrete. He was brought into the car while the other officer stuck with me, comforted me, and asked me questions. Another cop car arrived and so did my mom in her minivan. She was in tears and hugged me when she got out. Oh my god. So backing up. Some people aren't so lucky, Bobby, bro. Or whatever his real name was, was walking me to his car. My mom had already gotten to the bench to pick me up. When Cal told her some man already picked me up. That's when they ran to catch what car we got into and called the cops right away. One of the camp supervisors was actually tailing us on the road, which is why Cal was panicking and how the cops were able to locate us. Hey, now you can see why I wish I could kids, block bro. this memory out. Not it's Robbie's disturbing, way. it's sickening, and I often have to think about the horrible, unimaginable things that could have been done to yeah, me what would if have I had not been saved. Oh, yeah, that's brutal. Bruh, I was thinking, like, oh, like, it's just dumb kid making a dumb decision. This one's probably not going to be as bad. And then he's got people, like, high-speed chases, fucking Robbie getting, like, at gunpoint just like get the fuck on the ground like that'd be so fucking scary like that'd be the scariest thing over getting kidnapped bro <laughs> oh my god i'm so glad i have no life <laughs> there was this one night after work where all the employees at my job clocked out a little late because uh -oh. we happened to be extremely this is an busy adult. that night oh shit as usual we cleaned the store and headed for the front to clock out that night after work, I would be hanging with two of my co-workers. We mm -hmm. smoked a blunt and went to Wingstop. All was well. The 1 a.m. finally Hi. struck. I needed to be home and I needed gas. I said bye to my two co-workers and headed for the nearest gas station. It was actually right around the corner from my work. Thank God, because I had gone to work with it running on E. My car was mm -hmm. running on fumes. <laughs> Although being the closest gas station... I avoid this one for many reasons, as do many other people, especially at this time of night. Oh shit. There's often homeless drug addicts walking through it. Many uh, people hit cars and drive off, fights, people scream in the cars. It just manages to attract the wrong people. So yeah, as I'm I wouldn't go to either. Pump, I'd rather walk. I officially <laughs> leaves. I come to realize that I'm about to pump gas at a cornered gas station hidden by buildings at one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, no car, no person scary. was seen in sight. And you're about to get kidnapped. Got Spoiler! Out, turned around to reach inside for my wallet. I come up, and there's this homeless man going through the trash with this very large white bag. I'm not talking about Big Hefty that promises to keep all your household trash intact all the way to the outside trash can. I mean, this bag was freakishly big, and I couldn't see through it. Oh, I was startled shit. at first, as oh, I didn't even hear him walking 100%. or anything. I insert my card and look shit over disappears. His head is in the trash at this point. I see him digging for recyclables, I think. And I just continue trying to get the thing to take my card. To be safe again. No, when I get back sure in the car, he's in the passenger seat. Where are we going? <laughs> this is where things get scary. As the sound of the car goes off, this man perks his head up, almost deer-like, and makes direct eye contact. He looks to be at least 6'4", but really skinny. He had injection marks all over his body, and his skin was peeling, rashing, and he had a buzz cut. Despite him obviously being a drug uh. addict, his face wasn't affected too badly yet. Look, they gave me a bag big enough to fit a dead body in. The words didn't seem real. I felt the color leave my body. 
And just then, this man picks up an old, metal little kid's bike from the other side of the trash can. He begins to slowly, step by step, come closer, and begins telling me he wasn't going to take me. He held the kid's bike like it was weightless. Mind you, I'm a girl and personally have no arm strength. Okay. Run. <laughs> I'm not gonna take you. He says, look, I, I'm, I got, they gave me a bag that's, that's big enough to carry a body in. How convenient. Look at you. You, you look like you taste good. Like this motherfucker. I would run. What'd you say? 6'4"? Buzz cut? Probably ex-military. Guy, a lot of, lot of problems, a lot of, lot of shoot, sh a lot of shots. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would not be like okay with this. <laughs> I would not be still standing there like, ha 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 ha, awkwardly. I would have booked it as soon as he said, "Look," up as soon as he started talking to me, gone. I would, I'd be gone. And I'm a six three, like two hundred forty pound dude. He's homeless and he's on drugs. They don't care. I'm not going to take you. We're not going to take you. Don't look scared. Look pretty. At this point, I was already inching my way closer to my car. I jumped for it. And that's when I booked it out of there and realized there was another man hiding at the pump behind me. The other man ah. was wearing a mask that covered both his mouth and nose. So much could have happened that night, and I'm glad it didn't go the other way. I'm pretty sure that man was going to come up from behind me and either make me smell something to leave me unconscious or who knows what. Please be safe out there. Yeah, that's not fair. You cheated. You didn't actually get kidnapped. <laughs> Probably would have, but you didn't. That, that, that's cheap, Mr. Nightmare. Come on. <laughs> oh my god, these stories are scary. Fucking ads. When I was 10, my uncle used to own a property in Kentucky, uncle. which was not too far of a drive from our home in Virginia. Oh my god. He was an avid hunter, so his place mm -hmm. was in the middle of the woods. Hunter a perfect for hunting kids. area. He let my dad take us there when he wasn't using it, just as a nice little escape from the suburbs, because we all loved the secludedness. Mm. I would love to go on hikes in you the You didn't hide away well enough, did you? Because I've always been a nature freak. One time while hiking late in the day, I thought I heard footsteps around me. They sounded like human footsteps, so I turned and started walking the other way. At the edge of the woods, however, I saw someone standing behind a tree, very shady-like. Seemed he was trying to hide. I ran. I just want to say that, like the audio and shit in this, it sounds like you can hear people talking and leaves crunching right in this ear, and it's scaring the fuck out of me. <laughs> Back in the direction of the property, and went inside the house. I told my dad I was being watched in the woods. He told me to just stay on my uncle's property and not wander off. I didn't want to go back mm, outside after idea. that anyway, though. My dad and two little brothers you went off to pick up a pie at a nearby pizza place. I stayed behind because I'd rather watch the movie that was playing on the TV. I got confused because, like, I know, like, down in the U.S. and shit, they call, they call like, pizza pie sometimes. Like, I mean, so, some people... I, I've never heard it be used here. I was going to say, some people probably do use it here, but I've never heard it be called pie down here. I know some people do down there. So when he goes, my, they went to go pick up a pie, I'm like, the fuck do you need a pie for? <laughs> I'd been alone in that home many times. I wasn't scared. I heard steps coming up the little wooden front porch. There was a knock at the door. So I jumped up to let them in because I was starving. But I froze at the door, thinking... How could they be back so quickly? Oh. Dad? I said through the door. Why would they knock on the door? Someone on the other side said it's not your dad, but we need some help. My heart dropped. I looked out the That's window a trick. to the That's porch. That's a big, major trick. Still just bright enough to see an unfamiliar man standing on the porch. He noticed me at the window, looked at me, and smiled. I shut the curtains Tip. and yelled, Dad, there's someone here at the front door. I was pretending as if my dad were still home. We saw your dad leave just before. Just open the door. We just need some help. I ran to my uncle's master bedroom. That means y'all fucking spying. That means y'all are spying. You're just giving away your tactics. Have you ever kidnapped before? Do you even kidnap, bro? <laughs> and to hide there. There was a tap at his window. And I saw a second man outside. He also yelled, open the door, please. I heard kicks at the front door of the home. It was oh a very God. flimsy old wooden door. And it gave in easily. I panicked and went to my uncle's closet where he kept his guns. I grabbed his shotgun, which he taught me how to use, mm -hmm. and as my the door guy, to the bedroom opened, 
I aimed the gun at the tall man's torso. He raised his hands and nervously laughed, telling me to calm down. He backed away, back to the front. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah, slugs for everybody, bro. Slugs. You fucking, you just broke my goddamn door. Calm down. Go fix my fucking door. No. <laughs> They'd be like, the fuck you mean calm down? Was it calm down when y'all are trying to fucking come in here and rip my butthole? No, but <laughs> slugs for everybody. Waste one one round on one person. Yeah, this guy has no middle middle portion anymore because you just gave him slugs all around, all fucking round. Empty the clip and shit. Door with his hand still raised, and he said, "We're gonna leave, okay?" The two men walked away into the woods. No car in sight. My dad soon returned to see the broken in door, and I explained everything. He called the cops, who stayed with us while my dad did his best to fix up the I would have shot him in the leg just my for a message. My installed cameras and a stronger door the next time he drove in there, and he sold the place a few years later. Mm, smart man, smart man. All precautions, all precautions. Oh, four stories. Oh, fuck yeah, I forgot about four stories. Let's go. Hey, only one person really got story kidnapped takes in this place story. On one of the worst days of my life. My crazy ex-girlfriend and I had just broken up after what? having a screaming match in her car. She basically told me where I could shove it, and left me in the rain uh, in some parking lot of an abandoned office supply store. It was way too late in a night car, to call either of my especially parents. Especially if she's dry. And of course my sister was in a different state. I don't know that from so experience, So I tried calling but... an Uber as I walked out of the lot towards the street. I swear, adding to my misfortune, every single Uber canceled on me, one after the other. It got to the point I wanted to cry out loud and scream. I was a 15 minute walk from home. I figured to hell with it, I'd walk it. But shortly that would into have been my, my first walk, thought. an SUV pulled up to me. Three guys were inside. They seemed around 30. The guy in the back said, yo man, you need a ride? I figured why not? What did I have to lose at that point? I God, people are dumb! I hopped in the open seat in the back and thanked all. Stranger fucking danger. You never hop in a car, no matter what. No matter if the guy even looks like they're friendly. Most likely, the friendly ones are pretty friendly to your butt. Like, oh my god, idiot. I gave the driver my address, and he started on his way to my house. I tried making conversation by talking about how I just broke up with my ex. Tried to make light of it. But they didn't respond in the way I was hoping. The guy in the front passenger seat turned to look at me. I looked back for a second, expected him to laugh or say something, but he just looked at me with this blank, emotionless expression, his eyebrows slightly raised, mouth hanging open as if he were trying to intimidate me. I looked That's away, it. out the window, but really? I could still <laughs> sense him looking at me through my peripheral vision. The GPS voice said turn right on the next road, but the driver turned left. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Yo, I Maybe think he went the wrong way. Random people I said to the cars. driver. Oh, I didn't. The guy sitting right next to me said, nah, nah, chill, man. The lack of communication in this car was really adding to the building tension. I noticed we were entering quieter, if not dead, streets with few houses or buildings nearby. I was scared to say what I said next, because I knew cheats. if they didn't acknowledge it or listen to it, it meant I was in a bad situation. I asked the driver to just drop me off on the side, I'd walk, and his response was just laughter. Nope. The guy in the front passenger seat joined him in laughing. The sound of the doors locking as the car was coming to a stop was the moment I knew. I knew I had to run. I flicked the freshly locked switch back up and pushed the door open. The guy sitting next to me started yelling, get him, as I felt his hands try to grip my arm. I got out from the car, though, and I ran into the adjacent patch of trees which sat next to the parkway. There you I go. Bolted across Actually the parkway, kidnapped. Yes, story, there were still cars I mean? speeding by at this hour. I almost risked my life passing that parkway just to escape those goons. I'm not sure if they were just trying to rob me, kidnap me, or what, but I feel like if they were trying to just rob me, they could have done that anywhere and driven off. Oh yeah, that's didn't. true, bro. I think they that's wanted some cheeks clapped. I, I think they wanted to clap some cheeks, bro. <laughs> that's how you get some ass, though. Not gonna lie. 
think about it. Your girlfriend just broke up with you and just caught like be texting her crying and she'd be like, I just got kidnapped and shit. Like you left me there and then I was walking home and some motherfucker tried to kidnap me. Can you come over? I'm really nervous. And that's how you, that's how you, that's how you clap your cheeks real quick to relieve the tension. But <laughs> take that to your grave. Take that advice. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, that shit was creepy as fuck. I'm going to be scared for the next couple days. But yeah, thank God I'm not going anywhere because it's fucking quarantine. But make sure you guys like, subscribe, road to 1K, baby. I know, I know if you were to go down and look at that subscribe button, 99.999998% chance that shit says subscribe, not subscribe. So subscribe to the channel, road to 1K. Second channel, link in the description, subscribe to that. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video and peace. Bring me to sleep.